Amen, amen. This is Temperament Series Part 2. Did y'all enjoy last Wednesday? Wasn't that good? Pastor brought it, and it was very, very enjoyable. Can I get an amen? amen. We're talking about the Temperament Series, and I want to do a little refreshing here. And how many knows that last week we learned about Christian psychology? Can anybody tell me what Christian psychology is? Anybody brave and want to step out before reading your paper? Can anybody tell me what Christian psychology is? Say it again a little louder, brother. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. It's the sum total of you after your salvation experience. Can I get an amen? amen? We also talked about the personality, character, and temperament. They are not all the same. Do y'all remember the personality mask? What is the personality mask? Do y'all remember that? Anybody want to answer? Go ahead, sister. That's exactly right. It's the mask we show to the world. How does the mask come off? It comes off through trials. No matter how good you think you are, how wonderful you are, the personality will melt under the fires of trials. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. And number two, we talked about character learned behavior. Everybody looking up here, not cheating now. I want to see what y'all retained. Hallelujah. Come on now, we're in class. How many knows the teacher's here? Who's the teacher? The teacher is the Holy Ghost. What is character learned behavior? Can anybody take a stab at it? It is environment. This is what you learn from your friends, your minister, your family, your mentors, your, your co whatever environment you were in. This is the character that you're going to develop as you're growing up as a little child. Can I get an amen? doesn't necessarily mean that that's who you are. It's just a learned behavior because of what you grew up in, depending on who and where you grew up. Amen? Amen. Temperament DNA. We learned a little bit about that last week. What is the temperament DNA? Anybody want to take a shot? Tell me again. Who you are without Christ. This is who you are and this is what cannot change. This is the way God made you. Amen? Amen. This is who you are. Even after you're saved, your temperament does not change. Can I get an amen? amen? You are still that same person as far as your temperament's concerned after your salvation experience. But there's a whole lot that's changed because of the salvation experience we're going to get into tonight. Amen. Are you ready, church? Hallelujah. We're going to start at the top of our page. And if you're reading where it says temperament can be modified, are y'all on that page right now? Welcome everybody uh, that's watching online. Just keep up. If you're in the Houston area, come out and join us, but try and keep up if you can. Amen. We're talking about temperament can be modified. Stop there. Even before I go any further, temperament can be modified, but church, it cannot be changed. Amen. Are you hearing me, church? That means the way God made you, that's the way he made you. But your temperament can be modified. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go into it. Y'all ready? Oh, it's going to get good. Are we a little warm in here? Are we okay? Everybody good? A little warm? Let's go ahead and take it down just one. We'll take that little heat out of here, and if we need it fixed, we'll, uh, we'll call Brother Hector to come and take care of our air conditioning. <laughs> Yeah, he's got an anointing for that. Hallelujah. Just go touch it and lay hands on it, brother, and be fine. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Let's go ahead and get into this. It says, for several decades, we have heard a lot about behavior modification. Have we heard that word before? Behavior modification. Various attempts aimed at changing human behavior for the better, I would hope. Some attempts are good and some are bad. The one I find most helpful without any <laughs> side effects or negative side effects is the change that takes place when someone accepts Christ and allows the Holy Spirit to change his or her life. What does all that mean? Let me tell you. Let me say. Christian psychology. 
the sum total church you have to understand this okay because this is not human psychology there is a major difference from from christian psychology versus human psychology Christian psychology is the sum total of who you are after Jesus Christ has saved. You understand that Amen. human psychology is I'm going to try and see if I can dive into your past and see what your past is so we can make some behavioral modifications in order for you to receive some kind of deliverance or healing. That's human psychology. So when you're sitting in front of a Human psychiatrists, psychology, whatever you want to say, they are going to dive into your past because they have nothing to give you that can push you forward. Amen. And that has already crept into the church. That is in our modern church where pastors and counselors and leaders are now starting to dive into people's past in order to go and find something that happened. And that's the reason why you're acting right now, because something happened in your past. And if we get to your past and we find out what happened through that trauma, maybe that trauma, we bring it up, will somehow bring healing into your present. That's the, not the way the church works. Amen. That's not the way the word of God works. Hallelujah. Can I get an Amen. So let's 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 read something again before I get a little too far into that. It says some Christians erroneously think that their temperaments have changed, but that is impossible. As we have already seen, we are born with them. The Holy Spirit can, however, modify our temperaments so that they appear to have been changed. If you took your personality test, you had that temperament test. And if you're trying to somehow parallel with what the Holy Spirit has done in your life, then you're going to miss taking the test correctly. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, is that if you've been serving God for a long time, there's already been some behavioral modification that's happened through the power of the Holy Ghost. He is the only one that can cut away those dead things out of your life. That's why human psychology doesn't work diving into someone's past to deliver them from some trauma. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on to the future of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And there's so many big churches, million dollar churches that have adopted that system into their church atmosphere trying to dive in well the reason you're acting like that is because you haven't been delivered from that thing from your past that's half truth church amen. we're going to get into a little bit more of that in a second amen? amen so if you're experiencing something today well lord i took the test but uh, i have very low numbers amen i got like 10 all the way across you look at my test i'm in the 40s you're like, for one area, I'm almost in the 35 and 40 range. And as you start to walk with God and you start to get familiar with who you are, you start to become more honest and you start to realize, wait a minute, I'm a lot of these things, but yet the Holy Ghost has done a great job for my behavior, modification for those things that are rooted in my sinful nature. God has done a great work in me, so I no longer act like that because the Holy Ghost has gotten a hold of me. Amen. Mm. But how are you supposed to know where you're going if you don't know the map? Amen. Let's keep reading. I don't want to preach. I told God I would teach. But if I preach, that's proclaiming. Teaching explains. Amen. Y'all know that. Let's keep going. The truth is extroverts are extroverts all their lives. Y'all know what an extrovert is. That's someone who likes to be out all the time, has to be in the streets, has to be around people. They are never going to be an introvert. An extrovert is always going to be an extrovert. I believe our extroverts in the body of Christ are our evangelists. Amen? Amen. They love being around people. They will preach to a tree and try to get a tree saved. Amen. They love being around people. In fact, they get a little sad if they're not around people. Hallelujah. Y'all are going to love it. We got a lot of introverts here. Because introverts are very serious people. Amen? They very are. They, really, they can sit at the computer all day and be fine. You don't put an extrovert in front of a computer all day. You put an extrovert in a sales position. Mm. But how are you supposed to know that if you don't know your temperament? That's why we're doing this study. Oh, 
well, we're just scratching the surface here. <laughs> we're going to just give you a year and a half of our master's course in about eight weeks. <laughs> okay. But when a hard driving, demanding, angry person, look at this, becomes gracious and tender hearted, that person seems at first glance to have had a change of temperament. No, actually, God has strengthened that person's weakness, weaknesses. Similarly, when fearful, timid individuals who limit God's use of their lives by unbelief become more trusting. Let me let me stop there. And let me say something real quick on that. I'll use introvert because we have a lot of introverts here. That means you can be at home and be by yourself and be completely fine. Amen. Can I get an amen? Somebody. That doesn't change, but that's not a good quality either for witnessing. Because you're never going to get Jesus to people if you're inside. You're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. Amen. But that doesn't mean you beat yourself up. You're saying, Lord, I'm not a people person. I have the love of God. I love Jesus. But you got to do something in me to get me going so I can get out of my little space where I don't like to talk to anybody except the person I've known for 40 years. <laughs> Those are introverts. You're going to learn a whole lot about yourself. Pastor is an introvert. Pastor Jesse is an introvert. That's how you see the power and the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Get a hold of those weaknesses. This is the anointing. This is not who I am. You see me in my own environment at home. You're going to see someone who doesn't do much except study, read the word, pray, and take time out on his recliner. You will not see me on the streets, church. <laughs> Where's pastor? He's at home. Where's pastor Lisa? She's at home. Where's pastors? They're at home. We are homebody people. Even before COVID hit, we were still homebodies. We went to the movies, but that was it. But still, guess, went to the movies. Guess what? We don't talk to anybody. <laughs> but the anointing, it's the Holy Ghost that does what? The behavior modification. Those weaknesses that we're describing that we're going to get a little further in down the line, those weaknesses are rooted in what? They're rooted in your sinful nature. Where did that sinful nature come from? Adam and Eve, our first parents. That's what we're discussing right now. Amen. Just because they're there doesn't mean you have to use them, church. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us use them a little more than others. We got to get connected to the spirit of God. Similarly, when fearful, watch this, timid individuals who limit God's use of their lives by what? Unbelief become more trusting and venturesome. We think they've had a change of temperament. No, they haven't. The truth is God has strengthened their weaknesses, church. Woo! And be sure of this, we all need that kind of modification. <laughs> what is modification, church? It's simply spiritually speaking. For you theologians out there that are getting too spiritual, that means sanctification. It means progressive sanctification. You're not who you were, hopefully, last year, last week. Even this week, I feel a little different because I've been in the glory all week. I don't curse as much. Amen. Amen. Is that behavior modification that's called progressive sanctification just because you're attached to the vine? You have to be attached to Jesus Christ. You cannot sanctify yourself, church. Amen. You cannot do behavior modification by yourself. It has to be by the Holy Ghost. That's why when you're ministering to somebody and you're trying to somehow modify their lives without Jesus Christ, it is impossible. You need to get that person saved and filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. and then let the spirit of God go to work on them Amen. and then get them to HGM and let the word go over them <laughs> and let the word do his job. Amen. Amen. Come on now. I have any come on now. Where's my come on now? Come on now. There he is back there. Amen. That's my introvert back there. Hallelujah. No. Amen. OK. Praise God. No, we're going a little fast forward, but we'll be all right. We're going to get through this. I was talking to some of the brothers and sisters back there in the social. Don't y'all love the social? 
Nobody loves the social. I love the social. Hey, man, don't y'all love the social? We didn't have one in our last building. Y'all have been to our last building. Y'all walked right into the church when you opened the door. <laughs> that was our sanctuary, everything. We did everything in one room. That was our fellowship hall, our, 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 our prayer, our word. Everything was in one room. Amen? And I was back there, and I said, this kind of teaching is very self, self, self. I'll say it again. It's all about you and the Lord. It's not to pitchfork. It's for that person. Oh, that's you. And that's you to start attacking each other when we start understanding each other's temperaments. Amen. Are you hearing me, church? We are to hold an account for each other's faults as we're going through this teaching and lesson. Amen. That's why the Apostle Paul said the, the, the cry of his heart was to love each other fervently on fire and to cover each other hallelujah love covers what a multitude of sins because we are sinful so we hold an account for each other's fault i'm sorry that i faulted you today amen, amen. you gotta have that kind of attitude church we're imperfect people getting this thing done it says the apostle paul put it into words the heart cry of despair felt by all sincere People, believers who lament their weaknesses of temperament. Oh, have you done that? Have you gone before the Lord? Have you cried out to the Lord? Have you put your weaknesses on the altar and say, Lord, help me with my area concerning my flesh, my temperament, the old man, the wretched man that I am, the Apostle Paul cried out. You got to have that kind of heart, church. Lord, I'm, I can't wait for the Lamborghini, for the million dollar home, for the great. No, no. Any true believer, that's not their heart's cry. Those are byproducts from serving the Lord, church. He's going to bless us. And he wants to chase us down in this season to bless some of you. I'm talking about running from the blessings because you don't know what to do with them. Amen. That's the kind of blessings that are going to come upon the church during this four-year season. Can you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Watch and see it. I don't care who's in presidents. I don't care who's in government. I don't care what's going on right now in the world, church. You got to know who your God is. Hallelujah. I know who my God is. He's proved it over and over. Has he proved it in your life? He'll prove himself to you, church, because he loves you. <laughs> Woo. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this what? Body of death. He says body of death. Why? Because the body has not been what? Resurrected. So if you come up and you say, Pastor, I want you to pray that I be delivered from the flesh. I can't do that. <laughs> we can't be delivered from the flesh. Are you hearing me, church? Our sinful nature, the power had over us, has been broken because of the cross. That means we have a change in masters. That means Satan is no longer our master. Jesus Christ is now our master, our Lord, and our Savior. No one can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. It is only through the Spirit that you can make Him Lord and yield your entire body to Him. So we still carry around, like Pastor said, the ball and chain. We still carry around this carcass. But you got to watch out when people, when you're walking by, you got to say, dead man walking, dead man walking, dead man walking. Do you understand what that means? Dead man walking. I am dead to the things of the world. Amen. I am dead to my flesh because the power of the Holy Spirit dwells in me to keep me from giving over to what my flesh truly wants. That is the restraining power of the Holy Ghost, church. Amen. Mm. I love that. That's sanctification, church. You can't sanctify yourself. You're trying. You, 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 that's the whole thing about this temperament. Most of the church is trying to do it through human means, diving into the past because the anointing, the spirit of God has left the building. Ichabod, the temple of God without the presence of God is no church, no matter how beautiful the building is. Are you hearing me, church? That's good. You need the anointing to destroy the yoke, church. His answer, watch this, is electrifying. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have to come to that revelation. Lord, I cannot modify anything that I'm going through right now. 
I have to allow the Spirit of God because of what Jesus Christ has done 2,000 years ago. I put my faith in what Christ has done. Do you know what that does? Church, you got to hear me on this. This is where you build everything concerning building your faith on the chief cornerstone who is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everything else, the spirit will move in and do what needs to be done concerning those areas of weaknesses in your life. But your faith has to be in the right thing. It can't be in a program. It can't be diving into your past. It can't be in human psychology. Human psychology is invading the church right now. (laughs) We've We've been to some churches like that in the past. Start talking about my past and bringing things up. We got to dive in because the reason you're acting like this, because of the trauma that you went through. Let's keep reading. Yes, temperament and weaknesses can be strengthened. This is clearly seen from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where Paul says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. Woo! I love that scripture. Why? Because there's a whole lot going on in there. He says, I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. We have been grafted in to Christ Jesus. So you and I are new creatures because our spirit man has been regenerated by the Holy Ghost. Come on now. He says, since temperament is our old nature, because that's what it's talking about. What we need is a what? A new nature. This ought to set some of y'all free trying to minister to people and trying to minister to all of what is on the surface. Instead of, instead of getting them born again, that right there alone will take care of everything. Amen. We try to go out as a church into the field and meet all the needs yet not doing it by the spirit and getting jesus christ those are good works to do hear me by the holy ghost church those are wonderful works because it makes the connection to open up a door for you to be able to get jesus christ but don't get so caught up in works that you forget about the greatest work and them being saved they need to be born again church no matter how much you feed them or clothe them They still need to be saved. Amen. Otherwise, you've done nothing. Uh, Can I get an amen? That's right now is invading the church. Works, works, works. Why? If I'm doing this, if I'm doing that, what does it make? It makes you feel good. It does. But you may have not done anything either, even though it made you feel good because you closed somebody or you helped somebody, but you did nothing for that person. I know that's hard. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying, though. It says here, the new nature, that new nature, that new nature, that new nature, that new nature is imparted to us when we receive Jesus Christ into our lives by faith. The Apostle Peter could speak on this subject from personal experience, for his temperament was vastly improved by receiving the new nature. Watch this in 2 Peter 1.4. He refers to those who have been born again by faith as having become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Oh, let me tell you, church. Whatever it is you're going through right now, you have a new nature. And we have escaped the corruption that is in the world. That's what the Bible just said. All that you see in the earth happening right now, the corruption that's taking place right now is because of the fall of man. It is because of sinful man. And it says here that you and I have received a new nature and we have escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Because of the power of God's spirit. That's why the Bible says that we are pilgrims, pilgrimaging through the earth. We're just passing through church. You should never get to a place where you feel comfortable all the way in the world. We have come out from amongst them. The Bible says, be separate, saith the Lord. We separate ourselves from the world system. 
We separate ourselves from the lust of the world, from the corruption of the world. We must be a people that are separated, but not isolated. Are right, you hearing me, church? So God can start to use us in a greater capacity. The church doesn't like to consecrate anymore, church. They don't like to separate. Seek God. Go to the hill. Spend time in prayer. Spend time seeking the face of the Lord. If you want something to happen, you're going to have to do it. Lord, I'm looking for some behavior modification. I want some things deliverance happen. But there have been you unusual. Look, watch this. There have been unusually self-controlled individuals who have seemed to change part of their temperament and much of their conduct. But that has not cured all of their weaknesses. Watch this, because uh, like Pastor said last week, you can white knuckle some things. But there's some things that are going to require you to have your face on the floor. Are you hearing me, church? I'm not talking groveling. I'm talking about seeking the Lord properly. And that you're going to have to seek him concerning some things that have been overtaking you for a long time. That is rooted and grounded in your old man. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to, as the class grows, you know, we, we, we got into our associates class. We went to Bible college and the associates class, you know, we learned about Christian character and how to treat one another. And the associate class is just so full of all kinds of great classes we learned. We're learning about the Holy Spirit. As you get into the bachelors, it gets a little more. OK, now we start getting into tithes and offerings. We didn't just get hit with that right away. We had to work ourselves up. We get to the master's class. As we get to the master's class, the class started to shrink. As we get to the doctoral class, it shrunk even more. So I want to pray that everyone stick this out all the way to the end because it's going to get tough, church. But you'll be blessed on the other side. Can I get an amen? Mm. I love it. Satan knows, watch this, even they have had their besetting sins. Watch this. Satan knows our major temperament weaknesses. He knows what we like, church. You know, you like pornography. He's not going to send you something different. Church, are you hearing me? Amen. You have a problem with money giving? Guess what? That greed's going to, he's going to do something to where something comes in. Your money has to go somewhere else. You have a spending problem, everything, in the, it starts looking really good to buy. <laughs> oh, my gosh, those pair of shoes, they were $100, but they're $40 now. It doesn't mean you have to have them. <laughs> he knows our weaknesses. We were his for a long time. He's been doing this for 6,000 plus years, church, and even before then. Because there's no time frame, dateless past, amen? amen. He had a, a world before this world that he ruled in, so he's had some time to get skillful in what he does and he's very familiar on what he wants to bring you he's not going to bring the same things to me that he brings to my wife everyone here will be tempted by the devil and the bible says submit your will unto god resist the devil and then he shall flee that's the that's that's the whole solution right there that when the devil starts attacking you with temptation and starts overwhelming you you, you, you automatically submit your will to him. Lord, I submit my will. Father, I cannot, I cannot do this in my own strength. That is submitting your will. You acknowledge your, your dependence on the Father. I need the Spirit of God to be able to resist this thing. As soon as you do that, you don't do it after you've already done the deed. Are you hearing me, church? You don't go to God, but you still go to God. But don't go to God after you've already committed the sin. You see what I'm saying? You go to him in repentance after that. But don't read ahead. Stay with me. It'll be so much better. His greatest delight. Watch this. His greatest delight in regard to Christians, to see them defeated by their own weaknesses. Victory, however, is available through Jesus Christ, whose spirit can strengthen all our weaknesses. Dr. Henry Brandon, watch this, one of the first Christian psychologists to place confidence in biblical principles above psychological theories, once stated to a group of ministers that if his patients would not accept Jesus Christ, watch this, he could not help them. 
We have people call us sometimes. Did you hear that? He will not even help a patient or sit with a patient, counsel with a brother, counsel with a sister, not a brother, sister, but an unbeliever. He won't sit with anyone until they have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That'll save you a lot. That'll save you a lot of grief, church. Some of y'all trying to minister to family, trying to minister to friends, and you're talking all about their problems. They're loading all of their problems on you, and they're not saved. All I have is Jesus Christ. You want to be saved? Let's get saved. Let's get to the root of the problem. You need Jesus in your life. And we've had people call us that are not a part of the church. Can my so-and-so, or can I, I, I send someone, or can I send someone to your church so you can counsel? Uh, my, my family member needs counseling. And we don't counsel anyone outside of the ministry. Unless they're saved, and it's got to be a special situation. But most of the time, church, when you need counseling in this ministry, we'll tell you, just come sit for a while under the word of God. Most of the time, what you need will be fixed. Most of the time, what you need will be remedied through the word of God just going over you. But people want the quick fix. Amen. You're in the office all the time, but you're not here. Now, I'm not talking about anybody here. This is stuff that we've seen in the past. Doesn't work, church. We've already tried it. We tried ministering to people that weren't a part of our ministry. He says here, he knew of no cure in the realm of psychology for all of humanity's behavior problems. But in Jesus Christ, he had found the answer. In Jesus Christ, he found the answer to further illustrate his absolute confidence in the power of Jesus Christ. Dr. Brand, is that Brand? Brandt once started. You can use your background. Watch this church. As an excuse for present behavior, only until you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> that means you don't get to act like the way you act in because of what happened in your past. That's right. Amen. There's no excuse. Now, church, uh, we're sensitive to maybe you receive some kind of trauma, maybe some abuse, maybe something physically, mentally, or sexually. You've had some trauma in your past. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean after you're saved that those things automatically go away. Y'all hear me? It is the healing power of the Spirit of God that comes over the individual to heal those areas that you may have experienced in your past. As long as you stay going to a good church, not everything is going to be fixed in one session. Not everything is going to be fixed all the time in one meeting. Some of it, you're just going to have to walk out in faith, but you can't say the reason I'm acting like this is because the way you treated me when I was growing up. You have to let that stuff go, church. Amen. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on to the future of the high call and in Christ Jesus. Amen. You have been called out from amongst them. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. That means all things have passed away. Right. Are you hearing me, church? All things have become new. You may not feel like new, but you're new. The things that you're going through may not feel like you're new, but you're new. God sees you as new. God sees you as perfect. God sees you sanctified. God sees you justified. God sees you glorified. <laughs> That's the way God sees you because of what his son has done. Why well, you got, got you got to. Pastors will say this, too. you got to forgive yourself. You can't forgive yourself, church. It's just an impossibility. Just leave that alone. you got to forgive yourself. Because it's a very human thing to say. When you have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus, when you have gone into the presence of God, if you, have, if you can find chapter and verse where it says to forgive yourself, just find it for me and come and show me. It's not in there. Because you'll know once you've spent time in the Lord's presence and applied by faith the blood upon your situation, whatever the case may be, you are going to leave the presence of God forgiven. That means the blood of Jesus blots out the stains of every transgression. The guilt that you're going through will be lifted and you'll know that you've been set free that very hour when you go to spend time with Jesus. That's our right and privilege. I want to learn about temperaments. We all learn about temperaments. Y'all thought we were not going to do the word of God here? Y'all came to the wrong meeting. Amen. 
It's Christian psychology. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a lot different, church. <laughs> Watch this, church. He says you can use your background as an excuse for present behavior only until you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. After that, you have a new power within you. That's the anointing that is able to change your conduct. How? Jesus said, stay attached to the vine. We are the branches, right? Y'all with me? We are the branches. All of you here happen to belong to this local branch. This is your local branch. Though there's many branches out there that represent the body of Christ, you here have decided to make HGM your local branch. Amen. Now the vine is Jesus Christ. But this is where you come. You stay attached to the vine. You stay attached to Jesus. You stay attached to your church. And as you stay attached, God starts to go to work on that branch by pruning it for greater service. That means he starts to remove dead fruit out of your life. That is your behaviors, your weaknesses, all that stuff and that junk that's rooted in your sinful nature because Adam and Eve. Thank you, Adam and Eve. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions. No good thing dwelling in your flesh. Amen. We put no confidence in the flesh. Make no provision for the flesh. Walk in the spirit. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh profits nothing, but it's the spirit that gives life. Amen. Amen. We've been set free. We've been born again. We've been resurrected. Hallelujah. Amen. It says here, a pastor counselor, as a pastor counselor, I have been thrilled to see the spirit of God take a weak, depraved temperament and transform it into a living example of the power of Jesus Christ. What did the Apostle Paul say? The Apostle Paul, God loves to do it like this, church. He'll take what the world has already deemed weak. God will take what the world has already kicked out and discarded as garbage. The Lord will take that individual, will pour his spirit in him or her, transform them by the power of the Holy Ghost just to baffle the world <laughs> so that you can see that that individual who was a drug addict, who was bound on the streets, who has been set free now, walking in their right mind, that that is done by the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. He'll take that weak temperament, church, and he'll turn into something glorious if you let him. Admittedly, all Christians do not experience this transforming power. Why? Why? Shouldn't everybody be experiencing this, this great move of the Spirit? There is so much right now in the body of Christ where individual believers have become individuals. <laughs> that mindset has been adopted from the world individualist i'm an individual and that has hit the entire country that i'm my own person i'm an individual it's not like that in the kingdom of god church and what happens is they don't experience the transforming power of the holy ghost because they don't stay attached long enough i've told people over and over again i'm talking heart felt christians that god was doing something in their lives and they've detached from their church, from the body of Christ, and from Jesus Christ. You think that you're on the vine when you're by yourself. And that you don't need the body of Christ. You have already detached yourself, church. You're no longer a part of what's going on here. Every one of us is a part of each other. We are the body of Christ. And we need one another to continue to grow and mature and be healthy and be whole. Mm-hmm. So why aren't they discovering because Christians have gotten in their ideas, I, I don't need to be in church. That, that's invaded the body of Christ. And so I go to church, but I go to five different churches. You don't belong to a church then. You've never really belonged to a community. You've never really got a chance to, to know who your neighbors are back there in the social. Come and spend time with my brothers and sisters and get to know them a little bit. Get into their situations and minister to each other. Amen. 
That's good, Pastor. I got five minutes here. I got to speed this up here. Boy, we're going to get to. Okay, let's keep going here. He said, just ask a convert's husband or wife, or in some cases, children, in fact. I'm sorry to have to admit that the majority of Christians do not see a complete transformation of their temperaments. The reason is abundantly clear. They do not regularly experience the power of the spirit filled life. And I want to go so bad to Ephesians 5, 18 through 21 so I can share that with you. But we're going to close it down. I love it. I love it. I love it. We've already got this thing wired, me and Pastor. 45 minutes and everybody starts to get nice and full. You go past an hour, you start getting the headache. Pastor, it's too much, Pastor. I'm done. I'm all fried up, Pastor. It's just like hitting the wall, like nothing's going in anymore. But wasn't that good so far? Are you starting to learn something? Are you starting to see that if you've ever maybe in the past taken something like this, it has nothing to do with human psychology? It has nothing to do with that. It's all Christian psychology, the sum total of you after Jesus has saved you. Amen. Let's everybody stand. Woo.